Hello guys, welcome back. So now uh, we're going to talk more about JavaScript and in this session we're going to talk about assignments, data types and how they basically work. Previously, using this W3Schools website as a reference, we have been talking about arithmetic operators, operators, constants, variables and comments. Again, this is my pre third video. So I will leave the link in the description below. Follow that. Okay, so let's begin. Now, uh, again, my name is Dr. Shambhati and if you want to learn this whole JavaScript course, I will be making a whole ton of JavaScript for next whole month every day. A new JavaScript video reference will be posted. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you receive these notifications. Leave your comments, what exactly you want to learn in JavaScript, what problems you are having, and anything you would like to ask, I will be happy to answer out. Okay, let's begin. So now let's talk about JavaScript assignment operator. What exactly we mean by JavaScript assignment operator? Assignment operators are, as by default, you know, is equal to. Okay, this basically means assignment operator, where we assign a value of one variable onto another. So this basically means that assign the value of y on x exactly as that. Okay, then we have a plus equals to operator. What this basically means, this is another operator that is called increment operator. This is a shorthand increment operator that's equivalent to this thing. So it says x is equals to x plus y so what this basically means that take the value of x add it with y whatever is the answer assign it back to x this is a typical thing but in javascript we can use this operator shorthand operator to do the same so x plus is equals to y so this basically means take the value of x add it with y and assign it back to x similarly we have minus equal to multiply equal to divide equal to mod equal to and uh, double percent or double equal uh, is equal to okay um, in terms of exponential notations so we, these are various different uh, operators that we use in our javascript then we have something called shift operators where we shift the bit y and then we have a bitwise operators okay these are what we call and nor, uh, nor and not operators we have a logical operators as well uh, they basically work with respect to and or and what we call uh, and uh, not equal to okay so we have and operator or equal to these logical operators are basically a standard es2020 values so the let's explore them a little bit more in detail so we understand exactly how they're working so uh, equal to operator as you know is a very simple assignment operator this is a simple assignment operator assigns the value to a variable so wherever when we have used 10 is equals to x this basically means that uh, assign the value of 10 to the variable x or we can say y plus 10 means add the value of 10 to the y and assign it to the value x. So a assignment operator single equal to assign the value. Then let's talk more about plus equals to operator. This is an additional assignment operator as the value to a variable. By that we mean take the value of x, if for example 10, then x plus 5 means again take the value of x, add it with 5 and assign it back to, back to x. Okay, we can use it with a string as well. So if we use let text is equals to hello and then we can say text plus world so this basically means take the value of a world add it with hello and then assign it back to the text so if i check this output out this is going to print hello world for us so what this basically means that take the value of text which is hello add it with world and assign it back to the text and then when we print the value of text with inner html changing the html content we get to see hello world as simple as that beautifully done then minus equal to operator again equivalent to plus minus does the same thing take the value of x subtract it from the 5 and then add it back to the x value similarly multiplication operator again does the same thing multiply the value of x with the value of 5 and assign it back to the x and then what we call exponential assignment operator raises the variables to the power of operand so this basically means take the value of 10 and raise it to the power of 5 assign it back to the x divide operator again does the same thing modulus operator remain or in other words remainder operator assigns the remainder of a variable back to the x so take your x divided by uh, 5 assign the remainder back to x then we have what we call the um, left shift assignment operator this left shift assignment operator is basically uses the left shift variable then we have right shift assignment operator right shifts a variable signed value so as right shifts a value sign then right shift unsigned right shift operator that is there these are all the different shipper operators so moreover uh, we will explore them uh, in more detail in later sessions but because this is a quick one hour session so we don't need uh, let me just skip this and come to the data types okay so now um, what exactly are data types well very simply speaking data types are basically the type of data we are using in javascript typically we have not discussed this in previous examples let me discuss them a little bit more in detail basically there are six eight um, data types in our javascript string number 
big integer boolean undefined null symbol and object the object data types are object array and date we'll talk more about object data types in the next session uh, what exactly we mean by these data types is that for example we have used a variable called 16 what is the type of data we have used here we all know it's a number but what exactly type of data it is then at the same time we have 7.5 are they two same data in our case yes numbers but in terms of computers these two are two different types of data this is called an integer data this is called a float data a decimal value so we have what we call a string data and a decimal value data similarly a, a number data sorry decimal value data then we have a string data variable here as well so let color is equals to yellow what this basically means that we have created a string data types then we have a boolean data types boolean means basically true or false so in this case the variable contains either value true or a value false that's it so these are basically what we call two standard data types available then we have object where we create object type in which our data contains certain object notations now object means it's a representation of a class that holds value so in this case we have a first name last name they are two values are represented as a brackets and then assigned to a person so now this person is what we refer to as an object meaning it contains its name it contains last name it can contain age surname and multiple data so when we have multiple different types of data assigned to a single variable in a specific manner it becomes an object then we can create an array array is basically what we call collection of data so in this case we have a collection of data so we created a cars we use the square brackets we say data 1 comma data 2 comma data 3 so this becomes our arrays we have date object as well so this object is date because it contains the various format of date using a new keyword okay more about objects in later sessions so these becomes a standard data type so whenever we are using various different data we have to know that now, okay we are using a string we are using a decimal value we are using as integer or true or false technically we don't need to specify javascript handles these automatically okay so whenever we are using them javascript uses them automatically we don't have to worry about them we just use the data but we have to note the type of it okay so this is what we refer to as a standard data types then let's discuss functions in javascript now what exactly are functions well functions we talked a little bit about functions in our previous variables and arithmetic operators session let me discuss function a little bit more basically function is a block of code designed to perform a particular task that's it that's the whole gist of a function so whenever we using functions basically it means that we are creating a function that is supposed to perform a specific task so a javascript function is executed when something is invoked or when we call it as we call it so let me, let's explore the function syntax so in this case we have what we call a function we create a function by using a keyword called function we define its type being my function which is the name then we say parameter one parameter two these are arguments and then it performs a certain task okay this is how it works so typical syntax of a function works in this manner we have a function name as a keyword then we provide the name of a function this can be any standard name following a standard names convention meaning that it cannot start with a number it should not have a white space blah 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 things then we provide parameter one parameter two or as many parameters as you want or it may not have any parameter at all and then we want a specific block of code to be executed this basically means that now i can use this name to call this function and if there are 10 instructions all 10 will be executed if there are 20 statements all 20 will be executed so function typically is basically a block of code that performs a specific tasks okay so function invocation how do we invoke these functions or in other words how we call this function so we say we are going to call this function or invoking this function typically we say when an event occurs so we can again it's not it will depend on us so we can say that a function can uh, uh, be called whenever an event occurs or when a user clicks on a mouse button for example or when you use a certain action is performed on your web page or specifically we use a java code to invoke that function okay or we, it can automatically invoke as well depending on how we write the code as well and function has something called a return value it may or it may not it's not necessary though be careful of that but a return is something that is usually associated with function syntax so that's why we always try to explain it with the function syntax this basically means that the function was invoked from a statement javascript will return to execute the code after the invoking statement 
In other words, very simply speaking, we have created a function. We have said, hey, this is my function. It contains a and b, two variables or two parameters. These parameters when passed will be multiplied and then whatever is the answer will be returned. Okay, so you can think of this as a uh, as a, a basically like a parcel. So you send somebody that hey go to it and multiply these two values and then tell me the answer. So when you expect an answer from a piece of code, it, that is what we call a return value is. So how do we call it? We call it using this thing called my function anywhere in more. So here we have said hey my function four by three. We have given it two arguments because my function requires me to provide two arguments. Okay, so we say, hey, here's my function. It takes two arguments, and then whatever you, these arguments have been passed here, multiply them and then return them. So this will return the answer to this. So when I return an answer, assign that answer back to the value of x. So if I execute this code, see this answer is 12. That's because we have written it in such a way. So we say, hey, let x be, for example, uh, my function. Now here, what we are doing is we are trying to call the function. So if I zoom in a little bit to read the code better. So we are saying, hey, there's a function called function. Its name is my function. It takes two arguments. Whatever the value of these arguments are, multiply them and then return the answer. So this basically is my function of code. So this becomes a block of code that performs a specific task. The task is that there will be two arguments, multiply them and return the answer. So now I can call this function any number of times or multiple times as we want. Then what we do is we use the same thing here. So we say my function, we call this function. This is function calling. We say call this function and pass it these two values. So when this function values is passed and then this function gets executed, it will multiply these two values and return an answer. So when it returns an answer, we need to receive that answer as well. So we have received an answer and printed an X. Remember we did a task called button uh, somewhere in here called a counter as well. So if I come here, we have this counter application. Okay, so we can revamp this counter application in a better way. So, for example, if I create another button here and I can say BU double T and button, uh, let me zoom in so we can read the code. And I can say, hey, there's a button and I want an on click event on it is equals to double brackets, close it, oops, close it, and then I can say reset. Okay, and then backslash BU double T and button. What now I've done is I've created another button called reset. So when I execute this code, I have a button called reset. So when I press it, it should reset the value. Let's hide this thing because I'm not going to use any of this code. And yep. Okay. So let's just make, let's just say JavaScript, C, C O U N T R counter. And then again, I'm going to delete this line as well. And then now if I run it, it becomes more simplified JavaScript counter. We have a counter app. If I click on it, five, six. But if I click on the reset, nothing happens. That's because we have created an on. Again, let's just make sure it's click. Spelling is correct. On click, we have created a button. Now what we want, inside the script tag, I come here and I create another F-U-N-C-T-I-U function called reset. Okay. So this becomes my function. I block start, block close. So every function needs to have a block of code. The purpose of this function is up to us. So in our case, I want to reset this value back to zero. So I will say C-O-U-N-T count is equals to zero semicolon again important so i say whatever is the value of count just reset it back to zero that's it once we do that okay now i want to change the value on this variable and this parameter here as well so i'm going to say document okay D O C U M E N T document get element by id okay and the id is going to be what we call counter Okay, because we have this h1 id counter so we just need to reset it and then so we're going to say inner html is equals to c o u n t count okay that's it so because we have already reset the value to zero this will print the zero here and then once i recounter it it should start from zero because we have already changed its value remember we have set it to var var means that variable can be used inside this variable can be used inside this if i set it to let then that would be a different scenario. So if I run the code and if I hit counter one, two, three, four, but if I hit a reset, nothing happens. Why does not it changes? That's because if I come on on click, I have not provided or call that function. So every time you write a function, it's there, but it will not get executed until you call the function. So on inside the on click event, 
I will say, hey, call this reset function that I've created. So this is my JavaScript function name. I've called here on click. So every time a button is clicked, this function will be called. That's the true purpose of function. So every time you click on it, this piece of code gets executed again and again. So now if I re-execute this code, come back here, counter, counter, counter. And if I hit a reset, see it goes back to zero. Next time I increase again, it starts from one. And if I reset, it zeroes it out. So that's the true purpose of what we call function and how the function basically works.